Hello everyone. This is a part two of my presentation at the Solar Eclipse Conference held from 15th to 17th December at New Delhi, India. My presentation is titled, What Kind of Eclipse Is This? This is a simple presentation with an intention to build up some euphoria over a solar eclipse nine year in, years in future. A few hours after the summer solstice on 21st June 2020. To be exact, 3,110 days from today. Is it too far in future to plan? I don't think so. My presentation depends on a fantastic work done by Xavier Juvier, whose middle name starts with a G. Is it GPS or uh, Google, Xavier? My presentation also depends on the humongous work done by Mr. Eclipse himself. I think all presentations in this conference have used one or the other picture, table, or some other work done by the legendary Fred Espanak. The animations depicted in this presentation have been generated using the occult software written by Mr. David Herald. And of course, Mr. John Muse is always there behind the calculations. Needless to say, if you find any mistakes, they are mine and I'd be happy to accept all corrections pointed out. This presentation is a sort of process workflow that some of the eclipse chasers would do as their homework or planning. Very emphatically, I'd say that the process is easy to follow. All the tools are available for anyone's use, if so inclined, and especially for the, all the school children present in the conference they can follow this uh, process on their own uh, over the internet, on their computers everything is available for free Solar eclipses are divided neatly into types such as central and non-central total, annular, hybrid, etc. Here are some definitions A partial eclipse occurs when the sun, moon and the observer are not exactly in one line and the moon only partially obscures the sun, also known as a non-central eclipse. Partial eclipses can usually be seen from a large part of the earth outside of the track of an annular or total eclipse. However, some eclipses can only be seen as a partial eclipse because the umbra passes above the earth's polar region and never in intersects the earth's surface. A total eclipse occurs when the dark silhouette of the moon completely obscures the intensely bright light of the sun, allowing the much fainter solar corona to be visible. It is a type of central eclipse. During any one eclipse, totality occurs at best only in narrow track on the surface of the earth. An annular eclipse occurs when the sun, moon and the observer are in line, but the apparent size of the moon being smaller the sun appears uh, as a very bright ring or annulus surrounding the outline of the moon. This is also a type of central eclipse. A hybrid eclipse, also called an uh, annular total eclipse, shifts between a total and an annular eclipse at different points on the path on the surface of the earth. Hybrid eclipses are comparatively rare. This type is also a central eclipse. Hybrid eclipses could be annular total annular or annular at the start of the path and total later or the other way around total at the start of the path and annular later. Here is a map depicting central eclipses in and around the years 2001 to 2020. Thank you, Mr. Espinak, for this map. I show this map to point out the record-breaking eclipses that have passed over India in recent times. This is a zoomed-up version <coughs> of the map. You can see that there are four eclipses crossing over India. The first one is uh, the blue line 
the total solar eclipse of 22nd July 2009. The next one is a red annular of 15th January 2010. The next one is on 26th December 2019, which uh, interestingly crosses over India at a path uh, which is called Adams Bridge or uh, Ram Setu, uh, a sort of bridge, natural bridge connecting India and Sri Lanka. A lot of people went to Dhanushkoti for the eclipse of 15 January 2010 and they have the opportunity in 2019 to be at the same place to witness another eclipse. Finally, of course, we have the thin line, red line of an annular which is going to occur on 31st June 2020, the topic of this presentation. In recent times, India has witnessed two record holder holding solar eclipses. The total solar eclipse of 22nd July 2009 had the longest totality in the 21st century. This photograph has been taken uh, from the plane that space flew under the shadow. Let's look at some statistics of this particular eclipse. The diameter of the moon uh, on that day was 33.76 minutes of arc and diameter of the sun was less uh, 31.48 seconds. Now the ratio of moon over sun so diameter was 1.072. Uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, the source for this calculation is Multi-Year Interactive Computer Almanac published by the U.S. Naval Observatory. Then the second record-breaking eclipse that happened over India was the annular solar eclipse of 15 January 2010. This was the longest annular in the third millennium, in a thousand years. The uh, eclipse was also termed as a glorified partial eclipse because the diameter of the moon was so much less than the sun being 29.63 minutes and the diameter of the sun being 32.52 minutes so far and the ratio becoming ratio of moon's diameter over sun's diameter becoming 0.911 Coming to the particular solar eclipse of 21st June 2020, is it annular? Is it beaded annular? Is it a broken ring or a pearl necklace? We'll see. Let's look at the path of this eclipse. It's happening on a Sunday. It starts in uh, over Africa, parts of Saudi Arabia, then Pakistan, India, Tibet, China, Taiwan, and into the Pacific Ocean. If we zoom in towards the portion that is passing over India, the path length is about 700 kilometers across the Indian borders, inside the Indian borders. The width of the path varies from 20 to 21 kilometers. This is a zoomed in path. The yellow line on the left is the uh, border between India and Pakistan. Then of course we have the state of uh, Rajasthan, small towns of Gharsana, Vijayanagar, Suratgarh, then the path uh, passes into the states of Haryana and Punjab. In fact, uh, it is going into Punjab and Haryana alternatively for several uh, several times. Here is a town in Haryana, a slightly big town called Sir Sirsa, which is inside the path. The towns of uh, Tohana, Ketal is a slightly big town which is outside the path, just outside. Then you have a place called Thanesar and nearby you have the famous uh, the uh, place of Kurukshetra where you have this large uh, water body called the Brahm Sarovar 
Jagadri is a big town in Haryana and then you have the mangoes of Saharanpur in Uttar Pradesh which is just outside the path. A little zoomed in portion of the path showing Kurukshetra. On the National Highway 1, the Grand Trunk Road famous. Here at every eclipse, millions of people gather to take part in the uh, water body that is present at Kurukshetra after the eclipse. Then the path passes over uh, the capital city of Dehradun, the capital of the state of Uttarakhand, hill state of Uttarakhand. You also see the new Tehri Dam which is half outside the path and inside. Then of course the path goes over the hills, foothills, Shivaleks and then on to the lofty snow capped peaks of Joshimat. The greatest eclipse point lies at a hill which is about 4000 meters high. Nanda Devi Biosphere Park is under the path although Nanda Devi itself is outside the path towards the south. The path then passes over to, uh, this is a, a slightly zoomed in portion of the greatest eclipse. There is no city actually and it would be difficult to access the greatest eclipse point. But the uh, famous town of Joshimat is close <clears throat> and of course the skiing resort just above a Joshimat by the name of Oli is quite close to the center line. Let us take a look at the movie uh, which is spanning the path which is uh, going along with the path starting from the desert of Rajasthan then onto the green areas of Rajasthan, oh sorry, Punjab and Haryana, foothills of Uttarakhand and the lofty peaks, snow capped peaks just over the border near Tibet. The yellow line over here is the border between India and Pakistan. Then you have a border town of Anupkar, Vijayanagar. I will take Suratkar as an example for my animations which are coming next. You have Elenabad in Haryana, Sirsa, a slightly large town in Haryana. Then the path goes through uh, Punjab and back to Haryana. This grey line is actually the border. A small city of a uh, small town of Tohana. Kathal is outside the path. You have Pihova, then Thanesar and Kurukshetra. Then plenty of rivers flowing over here coming down from the Himalayas. You have Jagadri and Yamunanagar. A town called Behat and Mohant just in the hills, Shivaleks. Then the capital city of Dehradun. The Himalayas begin with Mohanchati, a peak. Then on the left you can see the new Tihri Dam. Rudrapayag, the confluence of uh, Ganga is on the right. Chamoli district, the city of Chamoli. The greatest uh, eclipse point is approaching just above Joshimat which can be seen on the lower left in the valley down below. Here the eclipse will be at local noon approximately and high above in the sky. Then of course this is the Nanda Devi Biosphere Park, a nas uh, international heritage site as designated by UNESCO. 
Then beyond the lofty snowy heights, you have the path going into Tibet and China. Okay, some statistics. The solar eclipse, uh, what kind we have to decide here? The diameter of the moon is 31.05 seconds uh, minutes. Diameter of the sun is 31.47 minutes. The ratio approach is 1, 0 0.987. In fact, if you rise uh, very high in the Himalayan mountains near Nanda Devi, the ratio would approach 1 even more. So we see that the, the uh, size of the sun and the moon are almost equal. Now sun as we know is quite spherical and steady. But what about the moon? The moon has got many mountains and valleys along the limb and it presents different limbs at different times of the month. So let me show you a photograph taken by me, a very high resolution photograph taken by me of the moon. This photograph was taken using a 12 inch <coughs> telescope in 24 parts and the parts were stitched together. The notable thing to notice is on the edge you can see many mountains and valleys. In fact the highest mountain you will see when the animation stops at the end near the crater Tycho. As you see on the limb, the limb is not smooth and is jagged and these are the very hills that produce Bailey's beads in a sol total solar or an annular solar eclipse. Just below this uh, is a crater Tycho and you can see many hills over there which are quite high. Okay, now uh, I would like to introduce a software called Occult. Many of uh, you might be knowing this software. It is written by uh, uh, Mr. David Herald, Occultation Prediction Software, which can, which has a sub, uh, which has a portion which is dedicated to the analysis of Bailey's beads timing. And this is how the screenshot looks like. Uh, the software is slightly complicated. You have to know the uh, exact time the location and it will show you the animation of Bailey's beads. Okay, now for uh, analysis purposes, I have chosen a place called Suratgar in Rajasthan where the eclipse uh, passes much perpendicular to a highway called National Highway 15. I have uh, designated seven places perpendicular to the path on the highway of which places I have generated the animation using the software Occult. Let's see the animation one by one. Okay, at the northern limit of the path, this is the animation how it goes. It is partial eclipse now. All the animations run for two minutes in real time. The eclipse is partial, looks like, at the northern limit and it remains partial, it never turns annular, which is uh, quite expected. Next we have the animation from the southern point of the path near Suratgarh. Let us see what happens over here. The eclipse is starting as a partial. We have some Bailey's beads. But the eclipse never becomes annular. On the top portion of the um, uh, sun and the moon you always have some portion uh, which is being cut by the mountains on the moon. So as expected over here also at the southern limit the eclipse is partial. <coughs> uh, 
Let us go to the center line and see what happens over there. The eclipse is partial at the moment. It is getting to be annular. But notice that it never becomes annular even on the center line. The bottom left part, there is a mountain jutting, mountain on the moon jutting out of the limb of the sun and the eclipse never becomes fully annular. Let us go uh, to the next point in our consideration. This is the uh, one third of the path from the northern edge, the point which I have uh, denoted as N1. <coughs> At the beginning, the eclipse is partial. Then Bailey's beads start to form the bottom edge and at this point also the eclipse never become annular. Now let's go to the point uh, denoted as N2 which is towards the center line but on the northern side of the path one third of the way from center line towards north and we will see that the eclipse over here also is not annular. It remains partial throughout the small period of two minutes of uh, this animation. Let us go to the southern side now, a point called S2 which is close to the center line but on the southern side one third of the way from center line to the southern limit. Even though there is a big mountain jutting out of the moon limb towards the bottom left, the eclipse over here becomes annular for a very short duration. Let us go to the last point now, which is denoted at S1, which is uh, close to the southern limit near the city of Suratkar, which we have selected. The eclipse over here becomes annular for a short duration. So we see that the eclipse is annular only in the southern part of the path in this very narrow annular eclipse in temporal path. So what kind of eclipse is this? I will classify the solar eclipse as Thank you. I hope you like my presentation. If there are any corrections, I would be happy to be pointed out. Thank you very much.